Do you feel like you're wasting time trying to figure out what to study rather than actually studying? Well, I help aspiring professional engineers like you to become sure that you'll pass the PE exam on the first try. And this is the series where every day I give you one insight, one rule of thumb, one key distinction, or one fundamental idea so that little by little you can get clear on what matters and how to focus your valuable time and energy. In today's Daily Insight, we're going to talk a bit more about the refrigeration cycle and build on yesterday. There was a lot I wanted to cover yesterday, but I want to keep these videos short. Uh, in general, we'll jump around from one topic to another, but I want to finish up a couple ideas on refrigeration cycle. In particular, I want to talk through the components again and what happens at each stage of the refrigeration process. And then I want to plot the refrigeration cycle on a pressure enthalpy diagram so that you know what that looks like and you can call that up whenever you need to think about it. So let's go back and recreate the diagram that we drew yesterday. So we have our compressor and our condenser, expansion valve and our evaporator coil. And let's label each stage of the process here. We can call the entering compressor condition state one. Leaving the compressor, we'll call that state two. That's entering the condenser. State three is leaving the condenser and entering the expansion valve. And state four is after expansion before going through the evaporator. Now we can say what's happening at each stage of the process here. After you go through the evaporator, we have a low pressure vapor because the refrigerant has a low boiling point. So it collects heat, right? We talked about Q in yesterday and in so doing it evaporates, but it's still at low pressure and now it's a vapor goes into the compressor as a saturated vapor, comes out as a superheated vapor at state two. So now it's a high pressure, high temperature vapor, and it goes through the condenser where it gives up heat and condenses, and now it's a high pressure saturated liquid, and then it goes through the expansion valve, and the pressure reduces, and the temperature also reduces, and then at state four, it's a saturated mixture. So that's a lot to remember. And one thing that can help you remember it is knowing these three things we talked about yesterday, Q in, which I think I called Q evap, I use those interchangeably, Q out, coming out here, and work in at the compressor. So that is an image you really want to just have at the ready in your mind. And then the associated image that goes with that now, you know the components, and you know what the state of the world should be at each phase of the process, right, before and after each process, what we can do is we can draw the pressure enthalpy curve for a refrigerant, and this is a generic curve. You can get this for any particular curve, and I won't be able to draw the shape perfectly. I'm sure it varies from one refrigerant to another, but I really just want you to get the principle here. This is the vapor dome. So out here you have a compressed liquid, and in the middle, you have a saturated mixture, and then out here you have superheated vapor. So state one is the condition of a saturated vapor, and that's what enters the compressor and goes to state two, which is a superheated vapor. That then goes through the condenser, which is a constant pressure process of cooling. So that's that low temperature, but still high pressure saturated liquid now. And then there's a constant enthalpy process as it goes through the expansion valve to state four, which is a low temperature, low pressure, saturated mixture. Saturated mixture, not saturated liquid because it's not on the left side of the vapor dome. It's somewhere in the middle. So its quality is close to zero. It's mostly liquid, but there is a bit of vapor in there as well. And then finally, it's ready to go through the evaporator again and collect heat and again become a saturated vapor, and around and around we go. So I've drawn this in such a way that Q in can be right at the bottom. That's why I draw the refrigeration cycle in this shape. You could draw it in any shape you like, but I always draw it like this because Q in happens at the bottom, Q out happens at the top, and then W in happens here. So now you know the components of refrigeration cycle, you know where heat and work are entering and leaving the system, and you know it not only on a schematic basis, but also theoretically drawn on the pressure enthalpy curve.
And that is a quick daily insight on the refrigeration cycle. All right, guys, I hope this video was useful. When you're ready to start putting these ideas into practice, head over to mechanicalpeexamprep.com. There are tons of original practice problems with detailed video solutions that are easy to watch. And the course previews are free, so go check it out. And until next time, happy studying.